Welcome, everyone, to the Maintaining Virtual Wellbeing podcast. My name is Jason Bates. I'm joined by two lovely guests today, if they'd like to introduce themselves. Sure. My name is Whitney Borowski. I'm the Manager of Student Health and Wellness at Michigan Tech. And I am Dana Anderson. I work for Michigan Tech Wellness, and I am a fourth-year biochemistry and molecular biology pre-health student. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the situation right now, and I'm sure you can guess where this podcast is sort of born out of um, with everything related to the COVID-19 situation. And we wanted to make this podcast in order to sort of help outline the what, how, and why of what's going on and how you can be your most efficient self in this time of distraught. So let's talk first about sort of what the current situation is and what's happening right now. What is it looking like out there and what is sort of happening at this moment in time? I think there's a lot happening, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's really great to have this conversation between us and between everybody listening, that there is a lot going on. I feel like when we talk in terms of days or weeks, that seems like forever ago, and it's it's wild that our whole world is experiencing this virus for the first time virtually at the same time. So I, I feel like there's just a lot going on. And with all of that comes emotion. And there, there's a lot of emotions out there that people are feeling. Especially with all the news and everything changing from day to day. Yes. And I think, I think it, that's, that's part of maintaining well-being is you need to stay updated, especially when we have the shelter in place guidances. But um, at the same time, I think you need to have parameters on what you can actually do and what is the best for your well-being as we get through this this stage of COVID-19. And there's a lot of information out there. And so you can sit there and you can overload yourself with so much information. But there comes a point when how much information is too much. I mean, we're all busybody people who want to be in the know. I mean, so many people have different aspects of social media and they're like, well, I just checked Facebook for the seventh time. And at what point is that going to be beneficial to your well-being? Something that's been been helpful as we talk about being in the know and staying staying up to date and aware, whether that's from a national level or from a state level, is I've heard many people reference the CDC, the WHO, Michigan.gov, specifically for our state, and just referencing once a day. So go to your sources, look at them once a day, stay updated. If that's the same time each day, that's great. But you don't need to keep trolling through news feeds or different social media platforms or stay on one of these websites. You can get all you need to know once a day for a few minutes. So just don't keep trolling because that, that's a way that anxiety can just manifest. Do we want to talk about prevention at all with this as well? Yeah. So a lot of the current situation, people have a lot of questions with, and that goes along with a lot of emotions that people are feeling comes questions. and. Why are we doing this? Why is it happening? I'm upset about this event being canceled or or this this class being moved to virtual. Like th- there's just a lot of emotions, but I think it's very important to keep in mind the bigger picture of it all and and that's that's prevention. So there's a few different types of prevention that we're looking at. So we're looking at environmental, community and personal. So we can we keep washing our hands, right? Wash your hands good. 20 seconds, a lot of soap, hot water, and and do it often, right? Just be very mindful of what your hands are touching and where they are. Don't touch your face. Be environmental. Keep your surfaces and your areas clean. The great thing to know about the COVID-19 virus is it's very wimpy. You can kill it very easily with very basic household cleaners, um, and you can even make your own. So there's a whole plethora of making your own um, disinfectants because they're really hard to find right now. And then the last thing is the, um, the community prevention. And, and that's why we're doing social distancing. And, and that's what just staying, staying kind of to yourself in home, not close to others, just limiting the spread. So why are we doing all of this prevention work? What um, healthcare professionals have referenced is flattening the curve. And the CDC has, has this reference as well on their website. And We want to be very mindful of not overwhelming our healthcare providers, especially in an area where we don't have a plethora of healthcare resources. So that's why we're doing this. It's not going to say that nobody's going to get sick because people may get sick, but it may take a longer time and you won't have that spike and we'll be able to care for people as they come over a longer period of time instead of draining our resources. 
And particularly looking at the student side of it, I think it's a little different because we were all, at least for tech students, we were on spring break and we all expected to come back, right? Um, and so now it's kind of like an extended spring break slash summer break slash I don't even know what this is anymore. So we're all sitting here and we're like, oh, so it's like, I don't have that much homework to do anymore. Let me socialize with other people. But that's not the point of this. The point of this is because we're facing a pandemic and we have these preventative me uh, like measures in place because we're trying to flatten the curve. And it may seem like, hey, now I have more of an opportunity to hang out with all my friends or do other things. But in reality, it's like, no, like we're doing this for a specific reason and not just for a social gathering aspect. I could definitely attest to the continued spring break. I stayed up at tech over spring break. And it, just, it since I've been in the same dorm room for multiple weeks now, it's I've just been in that same mindset the entire time. And now it's weird. It's like a ghost town because a lot of students have moved out. And it's just like, what day is it? What year is it? Like, where am I? Because it doesn't feel like the same Houghton that you know and love and should be like busting around with different types of people. And I'm just like, I'm just expecting a tumbleweed to really like roll past my window at any point. <laughs> Maybe it's a giant snowball instead, something like that. A little, you know, Ooh, a little bit more. You're right. <laughs> All right. So it seems like we've got sort of a baseline for the situation, what's going on. What are some ways we can sort of infuse some normalness into this, if you want to call it that? Some way we can sort of work this out and make our lives a little bit easier, and a little bit more streamlined, so to speak. Yeah. So I, I think one of the big pieces about all of this is is people are craving their normal back, right? Because virtually everything, so many things have been have been changed with how we used to do life as of a few weeks ago. Things have changed and things have changed very fast. So what, what we're going to talk about more today is, is getting back to some of that normal or how to stick to a normal life in, in, this, in this season of kind of wild. So um, a few things that we want to really talk about is minimizing stress, right, and controlling stress. And a way to do that, we'll talk about many different things, but making sure you're hitting the basics, schedules and routines, boundaries, maintaining connections, and then how to motivate yourself. So those are just a few, few of the things that we can talk about that are very tangible that people can start building into their days and weeks as we go through this, this time of social distancing. And I think a big thing to note with that too is before we kind of talked about emotions and going back to the not so normal situation is a lot of, um, of us are experiencing what I would normally call like grief because we're grieving something that we had this normal life, like we'd wake up, we'd do class, we'd go to the gym, we'd have all these things, and now we don't have that routine down. So it doesn't, it almost feels like we're living in like a fantasy or a different like alternate reality because it's, it doesn't feel like this should be happening. And I feel like if you accept those emotions and then kind of go back to the basics of how to make this a more normal situation, then that's where you start to progressing and making more of a habit out of it. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, especially given the current situation. There's a lot we can sort of, there's many different directions we can sort of head here. I'm most interested, I think, um, personally, in that sort of minimizing and, uh, and controlling the stress here, because I know that, especially as you mentioned, Dana, with everything happening, it can feel like nothing is happening and everything is happening at the same time. And especially when you don't have a routine to fall back on, it can be very chaotic and I don't feel always like I have everything under control. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. What are some of the ways and methods that we can sort of use in this time to help deal with the stress that we're facing? Since for one, it's certainly an unusual stress as well. You know, this isn't something that happens every day to us. I think part of the, the beauty in, in getting back to the basics, your movement, sleep and diet, is that that's something that's basic, whether you're in a pandemic or you're just living a very normal stage of your life. So I, I think it's very, very important. Um, Jason, you were saying before that like everything's happening at once, but then it feels like nothing's happening. I think that's a very perfect way to describe how we're all living right now. It's like time is slow, but then at the same time, it's in mega fast forward. So I, I think just, just getting back to those basics, movement, sleep, and diet. And yeah, that's going to change how you do a few things, right? How do you move? Oh, I go to the gym or I run with my friends look a little bit different, but I think this, especially during this time, there are a whole bunch of resources that are out there. And a lot of them are for free that you normally would have to pay for, whether it's online workouts or group workouts that are virtual. So there, there's a lot of opportunity, whether you need something in your life to increase your movement 
or you just want to try something new as far as movement base and exercise. So I think it's a it's an exciting time to try something new. I know that um, people are in love with Peloton, right? Like they have such huge, huge um, uh, trials and discounts right now that it's it's a cool time to, to try some of these programs that you wanted to. And, and I think if, if you're at home, you have the, the um, option to try them. So I think that's helpful. With sleep and diet, I think that that's pretty much going to be the same as it was for your any other time of your life that you were going through. You have to make sure you're getting good sleep. You're getting quality sleep, not just quantity. It's good to sleep your six to eight hours or whatever works for you. But make sure you're getting that good sleep and moving your body sometimes is really helpful before you go to bed or during the day, throughout the day, just because our minds are thinking a lot, right? There's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of fear. There's grief. Like, they, like there's a whole lot of emotions. So if you move your body, um, your mind may be a little more tired. You may be able to actually sleep. And then fueling your body, you, you still have the opportunity to eat good food, even though the way that you go grocery shopping may look a little different. Utilize the pickup services when you can. Practice social distancing when you're in grocery stores. If the And be mindful, again, where you're putting your hands. Are you touching the cart? Are you touching the doors? Make sure you're trying to sanitize if you can. Stay away from people. If you have symptoms, don't go out. But getting that food and cooking that food should, should be the same. Um, and again, there's a whole lot of resources right now online that you can you can utilize to learn how to cook or, or delivery services that are offering discounts. So it, it's an interesting time of the season to try something new as well. But it's really important to fuel your body well so that you can perform well. If you're eating garbage, you're gonna feel like garbage. And I think a big part of this too is how you look at it and your perspective. Like what you said, it's going back to the basics and it's just understanding the how of how you're gonna do it is going to look a little bit differently, right? Um, so as far as movement, I was used to going to the gym every day. And I remember texting my friends. I was like, I'm not going to be able to live without the gym. I'm going to go insane. I have no idea what I'm going to do. And then I started doing like home workouts in my room. Granted, my roommates still come in my room and ask if I'm okay because I hear loud thuds. And I'm like, I'm fine. We're just testing something new this week, you know? Um, and as far as like sleep and diet, these are all things we know we should do before this whole current situation happened. But especially now they are more important. And when I was talking to other students as well, they said a big thing about diet is they kind of have time to cook now. So it's like even teaching themselves these skills or even relearning how to do some of these things that maybe they were too busy to do beforehand because we're all poor college students who just like ramen and other things like that. So it's how you want to go about revisiting those basics. And it's okay to do kind of like a trial period. You're not going to like get the perfect amount of sleep every single night, but you're gonna have to test it a little bit because your body's adjusting as well to different levels of stress. And also with the diet, like, oh, do I feel better now that I don't have to technically go to class in the morning? I have like a Zoom conference or something. What do I feel the most productive and energized for when feeling my body? I think Dana, you hit the nail on the head with saying that it all takes time and your time may look different, but you still have a schedule throughout the day and an obligation to your schoolwork but you, you may have the opportunity to learn something and cooking is a skill or preparing meals. It just, it just takes time. I don't think anybody is born with this innate quality to be like a rock star chef. Like you just have to work at it and, and it's okay. And some things are going to be kind of hand wavy and not great. And other things are going to be like, yes, I am making this every week. Who knows? Gordon Ramsay. I mean, maybe he came out of the womb with like spatulas ready to go. <laughs> You're probably right. I mean, there are those, but for most people, it takes some work. And, and I think that that is the same for any of these things we're talking about, whether it's sleep, whether it's movement, the way you do things is going to change, not what you do. So it, it's, I think it, it's now is a time you're going to have to spend some time adjusting. And maybe it's a, it's a season where we are just moving a little bit slower as far as what occupies our time and how our time is laid out. So take the opportunity to maybe learn some of these health behaviors that can help you in the future when you really need them. I think we touched a lot on uh, physical health, which is certainly important in this time. But it's also important to, of course, consider your mental health because normally that's something that's commonly overlooked in a lot of areas. I say besides just during a time of pandemic, but our mental health is you know, just as important as our physical health. So what are some of the ways we can also take care of ourselves mentally um, and not just physically during this time? I think some of the, 
at some of the main things about taking care of your well-being or preserving that well-being is, is having a workspace. So you're still going to class, you're still interacting with your classmates, you're still working on projects. Have that workspace and try to have that not be your bed. Your bed is for sleeping and relaxing and your brain can't really separate those two. So really, if you can, it doesn't have to be an elaborate, huge desk space because some people don't have a lot of space or a luxury to have any space. But try to just have that separate from your bed because when you're in your workspace, your brain is ready, right, concentrating. And then when you're in your bed and you're like winding down for the night or if you take a nap, like that's like winding down time. So you're getting mixed messages if that's the same. Another thing that I think is really helpful is setting a routine. So I like to tell people, that we are all still doing what we're doing, right? We're all working at the university. We're all attending the university as students still, but things just may look a little different. So get up in the morning at the same time you normally do, and then sit in front of your class or listen to your class recording <clears throat> or interact with your, your coworkers the same way you would have before. It's just going to be virtual. And sometimes it's really goofy. And I think we've all seen the hilarious memes about like Zoom. And when you're looking on someone else's Zoom camera, it's like the, the like highlight of my Zoom calls is when somebody's kid or puppy like hops in the screen and you're like, oh my goodness, like not only am I totally looking at your entire house, like I want to see like all of your animals and like how you're doing life right now because I'm a little bit nosy and I think that's very entertaining. But one thing for sure is is when you have that routine and you're you're interacting with these people is that I know that some mornings I'm gonna have to get out of my pajamas and maybe brush my hair because I have a Zoom meeting at 8 a.m. and and <laughs> maybe may, maybe maybe depending on who it's with right um, but that really encourages me to to get up get going start a schedule you know have my coffee or whatever beverage gets you going in the morning but I just think that that routine is is just essential to whatever your well-being is going to be like for the rest of this pandemic, right? And then into whatever happens next, right? I talked to somebody today, I'm like, okay, like let's just talk about what's gonna happen when we don't have to talk about COVID-19 every second of the day. Like what are we gonna- There will be a point when this ends eventually. There will, so then what are you gonna do? Like it's gonna be a whole different span of things. So I I think it's just, it's really important to, to just have that routine and build in that activity like we talked about. There are basic moving, sleeping, eating that you need to build into your day. And that may look a little different now that you're home more and that you have time to move more or cook more or maybe even sleep more or sleep better. But it's it's still really important to have that routine. I touched a little bit on time and energy management and connectivity. So connectivity is is cool right now, right? Because we're doing it a little differently. But that doesn't mean we need to cut ourselves off totally. We can still be interacting in many different ways. We can interact on many virtual platforms, video, FaceTime. We can text. We can call each other on the phone. And we can still get outside and go for walks. Like if you see your neighbor, if you see them, right? And they're like 50 feet away from you, you still can wave, right? Like you are way far enough away from them. Put on the hazmat suit to go up for a handshake. Right, right, right. Um, so you still can can do that. But one thing that's that's really easy to fall into that I think really hinders well being when you're when you're working from home or doing school from home is that time and energy management. Because you're in the same place, right? Even though you have your separate workspace, you still have your home, right? And and I'm in my home all day and I'm working here and I'm living here and my family is here, which you may hear them. I have a husband, two-year-old and a dog. So let's just hope they're quiet for the rest of this. But um, having that like end time, right? This, this looks different for everybody depending on who you're sharing your home or your space with. But you need to have an off time because when you're, you could have that like, oh, I'm home and I could just work until eight o'clock. You started at eight o'clock. That's, you need to have that cutoff time and really protect your own time as well. So I think that's, that's super important. And going off of that, um, you've always heard, or students have always heard, make it a job, make it a nine to five job when you're doing things like that. And this is no exception. It's just the space that you're doing it in is going to be a little bit different. And I always say like, okay, if you get really stuck in your head and you're like, I can't do this anymore. I can't focus on homework. I'm like, okay, get up, walk to the kitchen, do something like splash water in your face, get up and do something because you sitting at your desk or 
hopefully not your bed, but sometimes it does happen doing homework. It's going to come monotonous and like you're doing the same thing every day. And then people are like, I don't want to do this anymore. And they get stuck in their head doing that. And I think going off a routine aspect as well is that everyone's routine is going to look a little different. I'm not saying you have to get up at 4 a.m. and start reading and drink your coffee. And some people are going to wake up at 10 a.m. and do whatever, maybe do yoga. Who knows, right? But everyone's routine is going to be look a little differently. And you know what ultimately makes you feel the best. And that is how you're going to have to set your routine, whether that's waking up at 8 or hopefully not noon. But, you know, we're college students, so we could do that but incorporating all those basic things into your routine to a point where you feel confident and comfortable with how you're living your days. And I think part of that for, for maintaining your well-being or improving is, is to have that, that support network. There are going to be days that they're going to feel crappy, right? You're going to feel overwhelmed. You're going to have again, a lot of emotions and you may not be able to sort through them on your own. And Sometimes talking to somebody, even if they're not a mental health professional, which I am the biggest supporter of our mental health professionals, they are wonderful people, um, semi-magical, I would say, like they are great people. It's always awesome to talk to a mental health provider. But even if you just want to talk to a friend, that's oftentimes really helpful as well. Just, hey, this really stinks, or I'm like really anxious about this. I, I heard the other day on a podcast I was listening to like, who are your four people or who are your three people that you are going to reach out to and that you can, you know, that consistently you can reach out to them. So like, if I hadn't heard from Dana in a day or two, I'll reach out and be like, Hey, you okay? Um, which I probably would do anyway. Cause I talked to Dana probably <laughs> hourly, maybe hourly. Oh yeah. Email sure. calling, who knows? <laughs> but like, who, who is your group? Right. And, and make sure that you can reach out to them and they know that if they haven't heard from you, who can reach out to you and, and just make sure you have that group because that's going to be really helpful in this time, especially when we can't gather like we used to, right? Or be face to face or have those interactions that we all just, well, not we all, but a lot of people just really love. I think sometimes this is like an introvert's dream, right? They're just like, oh, I can just not be with all of you and you exhaust me anyway. But but we, we do need those, those connections and I, I think you need to find your people and, and just make sure that you're there to call upon them and be aware of the times that sometimes things are difficult for you. I was telling Dana the other day that I know like late evenings, right? Those are harder times for me because I am thinking about a lot of things and I'm trying to figure things out. And guess what? A lot of this COVID-19 stuff, they haven't figured it out yet. They're just learning about it. Again, we're learning, we're learning about this all at the same time for the first time. So I, I, I just think having that, that group to talk to is just essential. And I think another thing to realize too is what I found comfort in at least is that everyone is going through this as well. I was sitting here because I graduate in the spring semester and I was so heartbroken about not being able to walk at commencement and having all these end of the year things, right? Um, and I was like, poor me, why is this happening to me? And then I was sitting there on Facebook scrolling like I told everybody not to do, but I was doing anyway. Um, and I was like, wait, all these people around the world are experiencing the same things. And I took comfort in the fact that I'm not in this alone. So you need to make sure to reach out to those people and just realize that like what you're feeling, somebody else is probably feeling as well. And it's not going to sound strange coming from your mouth. You're not going to sound weird saying I'm upset or I'm happy or I'm sad or whatever emotion that it could be, but just realize that you have a support network there. And if you don't start building one, this is a time when you realize like the people that are closest to you in your life. And that's kind of a benefit because Sometimes I think we get lost in, oh, this person's always there, or I can just see them in class, or sometimes you see them at lunch, but it's like, oh, wait, I have this group of people around me. It's just going to look a little differently. Maybe they'll see like my double chin FaceTiming them or something like that, right? So it's just building that support network and making sure you keep in contact. I actually would definitely want to build off that point a little bit more because both of you mentioned the sort of idea of how everyone's going through the same thing pretty much at the same time. We're all figuring the situation out. Um, and I feel like it can be easy to sort of be depressed about the entire situation and not, and, you know, not have everything look bright and happy. Um, but what are some of those ways we can encourage, you know, a little bit of positivity, a little bit of motivation in each other? Because I think that's a very important aspect to keep our spirits up and, you know, we are going to get through this eventually. Right. I think one of the greatest things to touch on right now is grace and gratitude. Like 
but think about the good things that are happening, right? Um, I, I, I saw a social media post a few weeks ago that said something about like, okay, everybody, let's just think for a second. Like Anne Frank was in this very small space for like 700 something days, right? With many other people like hiding for her life, right? She didn't have Netflix. She didn't have a like cell phone to like FaceTime people or text people. And like she she didn't have that, and and she had to go a lot longer than we will have to go. So there there are so many good things in this situation. And really try to pull out that good. Like hey, during the day I can go out and spend time with my two year old, and we can play outside, or I can call up Dana or FaceTime Dana and talk to her in person. It's not like I would face to face, but I can see her. I can interact with her. We can see each other smile. Like that, that's really helpful. And to really pull out that good, you may have to look for it a little bit. You may have to dig just a little bit um, to hear that we have so many medical professionals working so hard on this, right? And that, and that while things can seem really crappy at times, that there is a lot of good, right? There's a lot of people that are being helped and there's a lot of people that are, are being sent home from the hospital because they're good enough to be home. Like those are all really good things to hold on to. Um, one thing that's really helpful as a tangible thing is, is journaling. And Dana could probably talk about this forever because I know she loves journaling, but really, really journaling. And why, why is journaling helpful? Sometimes we, we think so fast and we are typing all the time that that art of actually writing something is, is lost or not as um, common. And writing something down in a journal, your, your brain has to kind of go at the speed of your pen and at the speed you're writing. So that just slows everything down. So I think journaling is one of those great ways to have gratitude. Um, so you can share it with others, share your gratitude with others. Hey, I think this is really great. I'm really happy that this is happening. So share that with others. I, I saw a quote the other day that said, throw that joy like confetti. And I wish I knew who said it. And I'm like, oh, that's really great. I'm going to use that one. So if you're like really happy about something, share it. Share it by text, call somebody and try to just spread that joy because joy is contagious. And we do need a lot of joy and gratitude, I think right now in this time, especially because things can look a little bit dull, but that doesn't mean everything is bad or everything looks really, really bad. I think a major thing this whole situation has taught me is to slow down a little bit more and recognize those areas of grace and gratitude. We're in a society and I get, like I get in this way all the time where it's go, go, go. What thing do I have to do next? What's on my checklist? Like, and I never stop and think about other things. So being able to practice the gratitude and grace is very important. And I used to be somebody who hated journaling. I like, I don't want to write about myself. I don't want to describe my day. I like lived it. I don't need to live it again, whatever. But then I was also talking to somebody else and I actually started journaling with voice memos. So I hated the thought of writing. So I would sit there and just record something on my phone, just literally talking to my phone kind of sounded and probably looked like a weird person, but it's fine. Um, so I'd sit there and I'd record myself. And then the fact of listening to it back, it sounded like a different person. So I was able to give myself advice and critique based on what I was saying in my own situation. And then from there, I was like, okay, I actually kind of want to try journaling. And then I got into it. Um, but I also think we need to realize that it's okay if you're not like sunshine and rainbows all the time. And sometimes telling yourself it's everything's perfect. Everything's great can trick your mind into thinking that everything is, but you also have those times where you're allowed to feel upset. You're allowed to feel sad. It's okay. Things aren't going to be perfect. You're going to mess up, but it's how you react to those situations and are able to still see the grace and gratitude in those situations later on. I'm not saying you have to do it in that exact moment. But later on, you could be like, well, you know, actually, that wasn't too bad. And I think people do that normally. But especially in this situation, we need to do that as well. And I think exactly what Dana said is, is with that grace and, and just being really aware that, yep, things are really odd right now, right? Things are weird. Things are not like they were before. It's okay, right? It's okay. You're going you're gonna to have to try different ways of, of making food and moving and sleeping. You're, you're going to have to try it, right? And if it doesn't work, you tried it, move on, try something else. You know, it didn't work for you. And that's, that's perfectly fine. And I think giving, giving ourselves that space to mess up and, and learn as you go, that's really great. But I think also being accountable to remind others, 
I was telling Dana, I feel I talk to more people than just Dana. I, probably, <laughs> I was telling Dana the other day, I'm like, oh, I had a really hard day. I was really crabby mom today. I was a crabby wife. And I just felt like I, I had a lot of work to do and I just couldn't get to it. And Dana was like, uh, yeah, it's just kind of like the day. You'll do better tomorrow. Like, it's fine. We all mess up. Like, and I, and I think sometimes we're, we're so hard on ourselves that we, we have to have this perfection. Dana, what do you say? Replace perfection with? With the word progress. So you're always striving to grow and be better. And I'm not saying you have to be perfect because I hate the word perfect or you've heard the saying practice makes perfect. Practice makes progress. You're working towards an end goal, whatever that may be within your particular situation. And a lot of people feel happiness and joy when they see themselves making progress. And knowing that the progress that you're making is a journey and it's not necessarily the end destination because a lot of people are like, when I become a billionaire, I'll finally be happy. No, it's the steps leading up to becoming a billionaire that you truly become happy because you're making that progress. Yeah, I, I, could, I couldn't agree more. I think it's, I think it's an interesting time and we all need to really support one another more than ever, right? And there'll be other times I'm not saying like, oh, the next pandemic is coming soon. Like, I'm not trying to be like a downer, but there will be times in, in your life that are harder than others, right? And, and you need to learn how to develop some of these skills and talk to others and, and ask for support. And I think this is just a really good time to practice all those and just really try to sharpen them for the next time you need them. Another thing that Student Health and Wellness is doing that we're really excited about is we have a whole bunch of resources, information, conversation on all of our social media channels right now. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can search uh, Michigan Tech Wellness or MTU Wellness on all the platforms. And there are a lot of good resources out there. Like we talked about journaling. We talked about some of the free workout information. We talked about cooking. All of that information is on there. And if you, if you see, if you don't see something and you want us to cover something more, let us know. Like we're looking for information help you as students, like give you the resources. We are all learning how to do this too. Again, it's the beauty of it. it. We're all learning this for the first time at the same time. So we're learning how to do this too. And we would love input. Like, what do you want to see and how can we help you? I heard someone actually say the other day that, oh, I feel like the staff who I've interacted with before just aren't there for me or I can't talk to them in the same way. You can still talk to us, I mean, not in person, but we are still working virtually. We are, can talk through email, chat, video. Like there are so many different ways that you can talk to us. And honestly, we would all love to talk to you. An overwhelming message of hopefully positivity and supportiveness as we sort of wind down here for our podcast, our first episode here. I want to thank both Whitney and Dana for joining me. Any last minute remarks, uh, words of advice you'd like to impart to our listeners before we sign off here? Just say, wash your hands, don't touch your face. I'd say keep good hygiene, make sure you're doing motivation. I mean, like I even put on the back of my door, COVID-19 goals might sound a little, a little <laughs> weird, but I mean, you still have to keep going day by day. It might, might seem like the end is like, you can't see it, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We just have to keep supporting one another and keep practicing good hygiene. Of course. Well, thank you both for joining me. I'm very appreciative of all the information you've shared. It was very nice to talk to both of you. Until next time, listeners, make sure you wash your hands, stay safe, and spread joy, not sickness. 